Hi, thank you, Lalita. It's, to be honest, it's rather nerve-wracking to open up an event like this. Um, so I'll start my talk. A um, little bit on the CNAR project. It sounds um, ambitious, but it's actually just a group of volunteers. And these are the key components of our project. Um, we're interested in bringing these concepts over. Um, we're open source developers. Um, we're also passionate about open content and basically the idea of free culture. What we mean by this is the fact that every work, everything that we do, everything that we publish is available to be reused freely, to be shared freely, and to be built on upon by others. And it is along these same concepts um, that we hope to bring um, to government as well. Because um, in a way, since governments are representatives of us, what governments do should also be open, should be made freely available to us, and should also, us as citizens, should be able to build on upon the work of government. So, I mean, I'm just going to go briefly on why we need transparency. Here's a good example um, of a recent event. Um, when I looked at this event, um, environmental event happening in Pahang, there was not much, the debate was framed around um, um, quite emotional or political issues. Um, there wasn't real hard facts and data on, for example, economic data on what's actually happening. So I could only find one small um, block entry by a, a citizen that calculated, for example, the loss to Malaysian citizens based on a tax-free um, situation of of this company um, in Linus, and that was all the data I could find. So as a citizen, I couldn't come up with a good, um, other than some environmental reasons, I didn't have enough data to have a good um, idea on where I should stand on this issue. Um, and then how did it affect the open source developers? Well, for the first time last year, the government actually proposed a possible bill in which it could regulate what we could or could not do um, and what kind of jobs that can, we can do. And, you know, open source developers or even IT developers, we're pretty laid back, we're introverted, we do our own things, and we don't like people telling us what we can or cannot do. So for the first time, our little small community suddenly felt, okay, good, we, had, we need to have an interest in this because we need to be more involved in government because what government does will affect our lives as well. So we worked out together as a small group of people um, initially, just three of us, um, and we said, okay, let's work on these three simple projects on our spare time. Um, we decided to have a, a tracker of persons of interest, um, starting with our representatives. Um, we wanted to be able to track the bills being debated in Parliament. We wanted to know uh, what are the bills being debated, um, what are the discussions and inputs are people having on it, um, instead of just politicians, and also, can we get updated notices on this automatically for us, um, either through our social networks or mobile phones? And finally, um, um, a current issue was to basically track um, issues of corruption. Have they been resolved? What's new? What's happening? Um, in a more systematic manner. So, I mentioned earlier the problem that we don't have enough data and we don't have enough information. And to the credit of the Malaysian government, they've actually done a lot in terms of bringing services and information online. Um, so for pretty much every department you have, you'll have, um, you'll have the information on their websites. The problem is that it's hard to get to. And the other problem is that the information that's being displayed on this website has only one specific use case, which is what that government agency department want. So, in this case, for example, um, on the Parliament website, their only use case is to display a list of bills that you can quickly search through, and also a list of the current representatives, and that's all it does, even though there's a lot more data on it. Um, and here's another example of construction projects. Um, the data actually includes a lot of details, such as when a project started, the value of the projects, who the company companies involved in the construction projects, but on the website itself, they're only concerned about finding a local contractor or fi finding a multinational contractor. So you can only search by those values, and that's the only data that you can get. So there's a wealth of information, but we're not getting much out of it. So 
how do we get the data out? And when I talk to NGOs around or just people interested, um, we use the term scraping in the commu local community, and people have this idea of scraper. It's not like this. What it involves is basically getting information out, is writing a small piece of code, not complicated, maybe this looks like about 30, 40 lines of code, um, using a free service. And what we do is, um, if the data is not in a good form, but it's in a public website, we can take out this data automatically and put it in a format that everybody can use. So in this case, we pulled out all the MPs or the Member of Parliament data and put it in a spreadsheet format. Now, and then, of course, following on our principles of open content, we made it available for everybody to use and re reuse. So now that data, instead of just being used on one website, can now be used for anything. You can use it for your blogs. Um, other people can look for specific, um, can list it on mobile phones, for example. And I'll just go through an example of, so we transform a single web page on the website to something that we'll be able to track um, more detail. So we enhanced it, for example, with their social networking contacts as well, as well as their personal websites, if any. We changed the bills into a bill tracker program that um, allows you to now quickly search, preview all the parliamentary um, bills since 1950 um, to current, so about 980 bills, and improve the text searching for it. Somebody else saw the source code and said, OK, cool, I want this in my hands, and they wrote an Android application for it. So now it's also available on mobile phones as well. So this is an example of reusing the data to make it much more, uh, more useful. This is from the CIDB data. I mentioned before it just looked for contractors. One of the things that we could do with the data is actually do economic analysis on it. So what we did, for example, with just the data, just out of curiosity, was this, how fairly are the construction projects um, distributed in Malaysia? So we would, what we did was we pulled it for every single year. We took the 1%, which basically means the top 1% um, of the project value for the year um, of those companies, and then we mapped it against what the rest of the um, contract contractors did best value. So as you can see from this, on average, about 40% of the construction projects in Malaysia by year is given out to the 1% of the top. So the 99% of the companies in Malaysia get the rest of the 60%. And in the worst years from 2004 to 2008, the 1% actually had 50% of the total value of the construction projects in Malaysia. This is just some of the examples that we can pull out from open data. Um, again, I'm not from the computing industry, but so we just wanted to check our facts, and we always make these things open so that you can um, double check whether it's correct or not. So from 2008, The Edge ran an article on the captains of the industry. I don't know any of these names because it's not from my area. So we said, okay, look, what does the data pull out? And we pulled out the data, and we, got, we found out that in terms of current data, two of the names matched in terms of who are the directors of the companies which got the total amount of projects. So our data fits quite well. Um, some of the new names might be from some of the d projects accumulated, or they might have been retired. Um, we're not sure, but we're on the right track. The other part that we can get with all this data is that we can do search for statistical anomalies. And one of the reasons I wanted to get this data out was actually to automatically search for cases of corruption. So just like looking for planets, you had a set parameter. Habitable, habitable planets are only from these sort of stars. So out of a million stars, we li you limit it to, say, for 500 stars. And the same thing, I did this for projects. Um, so what we ran through was, OK, we've got 360,000 projects. Let's narrow this down to look for corruption. And we said, OK, let's narrow it down to just the five pro less than five projects and a value of less than 250 million. And now you've got 267 projects to look at. That's a lot more feasible number to eyeball. Then the reason we did this was, well, a company with no track record should not be getting projects of this value. Um, and this is just our analysis. Our data is available so that anybody can run any sort of analysis they, they feel that they could use with the data. Um, doesn't say, we can imagine if the data was open. Uh, resolution of council issues. Um, you can map, for example, population by age, areas, clinics, if we pull it out from the statistics, dengue reports by area, and so on. 
And、um, it's not an adversarial issue. What happens is that with an open government, people can elect the government representatives that better represent them. What issues do they stand for? Are they corrupt?、Um, Whether it's their backgrounds. And conversely, once these people are elected in government, they can, on the other hand, provide better services with all this data. Okay, dengue issues are a big issue here in this area. I need to do more and bring it up as an issue in parliament. So my call from all this this short talk is basically: if you are a government agency with data, make it available、um, on your website. What can really help is, for example, is To make a CSV or the、uh, information in a spreadsheet format, which can be used by the general public,、um, and basically my call is just set the data free, and we can find a lot of things that will be useful for Malaysian citizens. Thank you.